Ow. Awesome. All right, guys. Welcome to a monthly support call for April. Coach Aaron, how we doing? Doing good, man. Another beautiful day. Absolutely. Uh, we had a couple topics to cover today. We actually had a really good topic, but we got a couple uh, studio audience members. If anybody wants to come off, ask a question, give us a topic, we can definitely chat about those things offhand. If you're here to just enjoy the conversation. <laughs> All right. We're here to enjoy the conversation. All right. That's pretty cool, Kai. That's pretty cool. Um, all right. So coach Aaron, you brought up a really good point. We were, um, so to give you guys a good background on, uh, on how our, our monthly support calls work is pretty much in the past month, we based on conversations amongst coaches, our programming team, our clients, our group classes, different commotions that's going on in the gym. We carve out some different topics and ideas that I think would be great for, uh, coach Aaron and I to just give some further in-depth discussion or thought to, and so there's different varying topics that, that pop up throughout the time. And uh, one that Aaron and I were chatting about recently was this topic on um, physical sensations inside of a gym space. I think we often experience them, especially with the training methodology that we do inside of Behemoth Gym. As you guys can tell, we're not taking leisurely walks around the block. Uh, we're moving weights. We're moving our bodies through full ranges of motion. We're demanding uh, fitness and we're creating fitness. We're doing things like lifting weights, swinging kettlebells, lifting dumbbells, running, you know, going hard on assault bikes. So it's, it's, it's normal and it's kind of part of the trade to have some kinks, bangs, bruises, and it's how we manage those, mitigate those, and just kind of continue to move forward. Um, but there's different sensations that we feel, right? There's soreness. There is uh, pain. There is, uh, well, hopefully there's not a lot of pain, but sometimes there can be pain. There's discomfort, both mental and physical, and we'll cover all those today. Um, but Arian brought up a really good point. I think he was having a conversation maybe with a client where it was like, Hey, what's the difference of, you know, what I'm experiencing during this workout where it's like, wow, this is really, really uncomfortable. This is, is borderline like, you know, painful, but then also deciphering between the two and these different sensations that are going on. So I guess we'll just start with that conversation. Arian is like, you know, how did this pop up? How did this become a topic? And then let's just kind of create some more conversation around that. Yeah, I think it uh, kind of stems from a couple of things. First, uh, just kind of, you know, the further education that we take upon ourselves. Uh, sometimes we can use words interchangeably. Sometimes they mean the same thing. Sometimes intuitively we know what we're saying, but we say other things. And I know we have a lot of, um, a lot of times we'll, we'll use the term pain, which can be kind of all inclusive of like fatigue or discomfort or muscle soreness. And I think kind of a good way to kind of gauge it is just a couple of the conversations I've been having with people where there's very specific um, discomfort that comes from certain types of workouts, whether it be uh, more like posterior, you know, discomfort following a deadlift heavy workout or a hinge heavy workout or quad discomfort when it's a, you know, a salt bike or high squat volume workout. Um, and just the difference between stuff like that and then like localized very specific joint or tendon discomfort where it's like where is a good fine line between that mentality of pushing through things versus like hey this is probably something that i need to be more kind of on top of or pay attention to and it has come up a few times i know in some of our previous calls we had kind of an opportunity to chat with and chat through um uh some shoulder discomfort um and it kind of fell into that same same category. Uh, a lot of times I think people come into the gym and they're hyper aware of the movements, their sensations, they're paying more attention to their body and positions. And they know, again, most of us know that if we're inside of a gym space, like we can really hurt ourselves if we're not paying attention. And then we go and do the same general movement patterns outside of the gym where we're not paying attention or we're not really, you know, taking the same consideration that can lead to similar discomfort and it's that feeling of hey you know i don't know if i should go to the gym my ankle is really bothering me or my foot is really bothering me or kind of things along those lines and so just a few of the conversations that i come up with had kind of revolved more around back like low back um typically following um either some just like built up pain or discomfort that they've had over long periods of time or just some like more um uh, non-confidence in certain movement patterns 
um, that have uh, like allowed us to kind of start exploring it on a more individual basis that have you know really made huge strides in correcting and kind of re-educating people to give them the opportunity to like know that like this is not like an injury this is just something that i'm not confident in or a range of motion that i don't have a lot of um, capacity or a bit of ability in that i need to further improve especially in the consideration of a group workout or the type of training or lifestyle with kids and all the other pieces that go through and so it's been really interesting to see because being able to take these conversations kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis to kind of ask you know the same handful of questions like how did you do it like how would you describe it what i found is that typically it typically it falls within that um that that range of uh you know kind of where is it on a scale of one to ten how long have you been dealing with it and like that's already a really kind of helpful place for us to be able to determine like kind of what's going on because so there are instances in which you know like there is actually something going on you have a history of you know an acl tear or knee issues or ankle issues and stuff like that where we need to be more mindful of and then there are other times where this is just you know, discomfort that you guys are getting from your you know calf quad knee shin shoulder whatever just doesn't have the capacity to be able to do the current movement um, so scaling things around that or just kind of reframing it yeah you bring up some really good points there and i think that um you know these are these are good individual conversations to have and these are obviously what we would encourage anybody that does listen to this is we always encourage our members to bring up these types of conversations with coaches because we're all very expertise in altering and adjusting things in the moment to make sure that we're not further aggravating things but also addressing some long-term lingering um i guess i would call it pain or or uh you know annoying style sensations that we might be be feeling i mean we've had a lot of success working with clients who um, you know, start exercise routines, but stop exercise routines because they have this lingering knee pain that's been buggering, bugging them since they were in high school, right? And oftentimes when we go the, uh, the modern medicine route, we go to doctors or we go to orthopedic surgeons or we go to, um, you know, people in that industry, not oftentimes are we able to potentially find the solutions that we're looking for if we're trying to avoid pharmaceutical medications, surgical interventions, you know, inje injections, things of that sort, which is often what might potentially be uh, prescribed. Um, and so I think it's, I think what's important here is to decipher amongst really the three most popular sensations that we are feeling inside of a gym space. And Aaron, you can talk on these a little bit more with me and correct me if I'm wrong, but the three most popular sensations that we experience inside of a gym space, I think in order of, uh, of when you experience them is discomfort, soreness, and pain. Discomfort is actually a sensation that I would argue to say that we want to experience, especially with a lot of our training modalities where we have different intentions behind our training. Discomfort is a very normal sensation and it's actually a very good sensation to experience and to acknowledge when you experience experience it knowing that it is safe to push past discomfort and so i'll give you some examples of discomfort a long set of wall ball shots i think we've all been there right the discomfort that you're feeling in your quadriceps the top of your legs where it's blood flow where it's oh my gosh i want to put this ball down but i'm going to keep pushing for five more reps as long as you can move well and you can safely push past that there is a lot of earned fitness and earned mental fitness by now acknowledging that discomfort and kind of pushing through it safely like, I think we can all agree that stopping at 15 wall ball shots, but experiencing the discomfort and pushing to 25, like that's a relatively safe 10, so long that you can move well doing it and you're feeling the sensations where we, you know, where we typically would feel it, which is most likely in the quadriceps. We'll get to pain here in a second. Another, I mean, we could, we could draw parallels with different tools and pieces of equipment that we have inside of a gym space, right? Going on a hard 400 meter run the last, but first 100 meters after doing X, Y, and Z barbell lifts, like it's going to be very uncomfortable, but as long as you can safely and recognize and acknowledge, okay, this is discomfort that I'm experiencing, whether it's mental discomfort, I don't want to do this, I want to stop, right? Or physical discomfort, I'm so fatigued and tired, my legs feel like jello, I can't move them any further. If you can recognize and acknowledge like this is discomfort and it's actually going to behoove me to like push through 
discomfort, that could be very, very beneficial for your development, whether it's fitness or your development, right? As your uh, fitness in general, right? Let's talk about fitness, your development is fitness. Um, so we talked a little bit about physical and mental discomfort there. We get a, we get a good balance of both depending on what's going on inside the gym space. But as you guys know, when we show up to the gym, like we're not here to do the easy work. We show up to do the hard work and discomfort usually comes hand in hand with that. The other experience or sensation that we might feel is soreness. And I would venture to say that we've all experienced varying levels of soreness, depending on the workout, depending on the day, depending on our recovery strategies or lack thereof. Like there's been more days where we are less sore and more days where we are more sore. We actually had a really good, and we'll link it, really good conversation. I think one or two uh, support calls back where we talked about soreness and how it's not a good depiction of whether that was an effective training session or not. But soreness is one of those sensations where it's like, hey, I feel like I did something yesterday. And if it's like, hey, I feel like I did a half or a full Murph yesterday, that feeling is going to be a lot more like, whoa, I definitely did something yesterday versus like, oh man, maybe I took on a movement that the volume or the intensity was slightly different, but I'm definitely feeling the soreness from it. So soreness is one of those sensations where it's like, it makes you feel like you did something the previous day. But it's also a relatively safe sensation knowing that it's musculature, it's not joint, it's not bone, it's not tendon, it's not, you know, localized area, but those were the muscle groups, excuse me, guys, savvy, those were the muscle groups that were used the, the previous day before. Um, and um, so soreness, right? Relatively safe sensation. And usually that's something that decreases or mitigates as the days go along. And as you guys have felt, everybody has been sore and done something the next day. Typically our, our coaching advice there is like, hey, get up, move around, take your body through full range of motion. Hey, sometimes the best thing from being sore from squats is to squat more, not with like loading and intensity, but just move our body through those full ranges of motion so that we can get blood flow to those areas. We can kind of flush the tissues. We can get some synovial fluid going through the joint. And actually you guys can, uh, can, can validate this. You feel better when you move the next day. If I'm super sore waking up or the next day, when I start to move my body, I get a little sweat going, I get a little flush going, I'm actually feeling better. And then that actually gets better as we go along. Now, there's a, a specific type of soreness that's called uh, DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness, where the tissues are like drastically torn down and broken down to the point where it's like, I actually get more and more sore as the days go along. That's actually a, a, a very severe level of soreness or a very severe level of muscle breakdown that isn't necessarily dangerous per se, but it's just one where it's like, let's say that you did something. I'll even use, we'll use Murph as an example. We do Murph once a year. Um, but the volume and the length and duration of just training and exercise that that workout kind of puts out potentially could leave somebody with delayed onset muscle soreness if they are nowhere near the, the, the level of taking on that type of volume or intensity. That's why every year we really encourage people that don't have a specific level of experience to partner up with somebody because yeah. taking on two miles of running, yeah. 300 squats, Excuse my son, guys. 200 push ups. Kai, thank you. 100 pull ups is going to be much different than taking on half of that. And so that is soreness, which is the second level of sensation that we would feel. And then think about so discomfort and soreness, both of those, they have a short, short lifespan to them, right? They kind of go away after the moment, whether it's a couple of days, whether it's kind of in the moment. As you guys know, you're doing a a hefty set of wall ball shots, that discomfort that you're feeling, it slowly and quick, actually it quickly goes away after you stop doing what you're doing. Then we have something like pain. Think about pain more along the lines of like, okay, I'm doing an exercise. I'm feeling something in a localized spot. I stopped doing it. I still have pretty, pretty, uh, pretty uncomfortable sensations in that localized spot. I give it time. I still have issues in that localized spot. So that's kind of pain where it's like this lingering thing where it doesn't go away after a couple of days. It doesn't go away when I stop doing X, Y, and Z movement. That's giving me some issues. Um, or it just becomes problematic where it's lingering and think about it in the terms of like, if everybody's had any like shoulder pain, hip pain, knee pain, or maybe even we can use this as like a traumatic injury. So let's say that you roll your ankle, like 
hey, I rolled my ankle. It's, it's likely not going to improve over the course of probably a 24 hour time span, much less maybe a week's time span, because there was some sort of trauma that happened to the joint and the body is working hard to heal that. And oftentimes we can utilize recovery strategies and remedies to enhance that healing process, but nothing is going to be better than just time. That's why when we have injuries that revolve around pain, what we're doing is we're working around the injuries. We're not pushing through this discomfort. Oh, I rolled my ankle. Okay. Well, it's just going to hurt. It's going to suck. I'm going to get back out there and run and do a bunch of jumping and pounding on my foot. No, we're going to be mindful of our body's recoverability in that current moment in time as we recover this injury. But there's so much other things that we can do with other parts of our body. And I think that's where our team um, at Behemoth come into play where it's like, just because you're injured, just because you're sore, just because you have you know varying levels of discomfort, doesn't mean that you can't come and move your body the following day. It's just important that there's some level of communication there with our coaches so that we know how to individualize that experience for you, whether it is simply biking and foam rolling, right? Or it is walking, or it is altering or adjusting the workout based on what you have going on. And so you, know, you can talk to uh, many of our members who have gone through injuries, but still kept their presence in the group class, because what we've done, and we take great pride in is being able to modify and adjust. And now we're going through a level of education where we're getting our team to the point where we can solve some of these more complex problems where it's like, Hey, I've had this lingering knee pain or shoulder pain or hip pain. And it's like, we're, we're gaining the education and we're going through the process of being able to navigate these things through a relatively detailed assessment to see what is going on and how to really apply solutions to the problems that we see within our group space. So circling back, discomfort, something that is, if you can acknowledge it, you can understand where it's at. You can extend, you can understand when it's coming. This actually can have massive improvement on your mental and physical fitness when you can embrace it and you can push through it safely so long that you can do it safely and you understand that you move well through it. Relatively short-lived though. Soreness, same thing, relatively short-lived, right? means that we we did something the previous day. There was some sort of change in volume or intensity or maybe just new movement where it hit specific muscle groups or body parts to where it's letting your body know, hey, there was some sort of new adaptation. Safe, understanding that this is generalized uh, muscle area, not localized to a joint or bone or structure, stuff like that. Things that will go away relatively quickly, whether it's within a couple of days or whether it's within you know, a 24 hour time period. More movement is the solution for soreness, getting blood flow, flushing those things. And then we have something like pain where it's like pain. Yes, we need to throw a red flag on that. That's something where it's like, hey, this is not going away. When I stop doing X, Y, and Z that creates pain, it's not going away. It's lingering for long periods of time. This is where there needs to be conversation with us and the coaching team to address what's going on. And we can take you through assessments to see what's going on specifically, alter and adjust the program, but while also applying the right things to help you move past that. Aaron, I don't know if you had anything else on that. No, that's great, man. I think um, you, you really hit the nail on the head. Even within those three categories, you put some really good kind of guidance lines around it. Because like you said, um, you can use certain words interchangeably, yet they mean different things, right? The feeling of going all out on an assault bike is very uncomfortable. Like that would be more of the discomfort. Like you said, it's something where as soon as you stop, the pain goes away, right? It's that short term. Same thing with soreness. If you're moving and you are feeling better, like most likely that's not injury or, you know, something problematic. That's just general localized soreness in the muscle and movement is correcting it. Um, I think even more specifically, when you start looking at, okay, What's the difference between, you know, a mindset shift of somebody who's wanting to come in, oh, I think this is just discomfort, or I think this is just a little bit of soreness, it's not a big deal. Like, where does it cross that threshold into, okay, now I probably need to speak up or say something, or this isn't just something that I can mentally work through, and it'll just get better, you know, fingers crossed. It's kind of in that same mindset of, does it get worse? with repetition, right? Is going through movement, is trying to, you know, use that soreness relief or going through additional movement, does it feel like it's getting better or gets worse? If it's getting worse with repetition, like that's usually 
most likely a red flag, right? On the top of that, like, where is the relative pain threshold? Now we, we like to use like a scale of one to 10, but if it's above a five, I mean, a five is probably annoying, but enough to be like noticeably having to change what you're doing or stopping the, the forward movement because it's starting to get like uncomfortable. But if your pain in your joints, your muscle, your knee, wherever it is, is above a five out of 10, then it's getting worse with reps. Like those are big red flags for it to be like, hey, I probably should stop or we should tra transition to something else because something is going on that we need to be smart with. You can take something that could be a short term, you know, deviation. Hey, I have a little bit of a something going on that needs to be taken care of into a long term problem if you do continue to push on that. Um, the last one tends to revolve around that soreness phase, but it is where, you know, the next day it is progressively worse. And again, I think being relative to kind of what the amount of output is. If you do a MRF, like you're most likely going to be sore and generally tired because of all of the movements. But if you're doing, you know, similar volume, similar type workouts that you're used to, but the next day you're experiencing extreme discomfort in areas that you aren't used to, and it's not going away, it's not getting better throughout the day with general movement. Like that's definitely something. Those are the three kind of big red flags that I always bring up in these conversations that I have. It's like, it's worse with reps, above a five out of a 10, very uncomfortable, bruising, stuff like that the next day that are that is uncommon with trip, typical training. Like those are the red flags where it's like, okay, this needs to be escalated to a point where we're making some alterations or taking a deeper look so that we aren't doing something that is potentially making this worse. Yeah, those are really good points. The last point I want to make on that too is like, guys, don't don't navigate this process alone, right? We are very expertised in this realm when it comes to um, these types of sensations that are that are experienced. We've experienced them ourselves, and we've worked with tons and tons of clients that have experienced them on their own. And we're only growing our knowledge base and our education, but like, don't navigate these things alone. I think it like hurts our heart the most when people think that they're alone in this journey where it's like, oh man, this is really bothering me. So I'm just going to stop going to the gym because I feel like that is the best solution because my shoulder's bothering me. But very likely talking with a coach to figure out what the sensation is, is that they're, they're actually experiencing there might be something where it's like, Hey, come back, like get, get your butt in the gym. Like what you're experiencing is this, right? And I can actually give you some expectations in the next 48 hours where you're not going to really be experiencing this at all. And I actually just had a conversation with one of our uh, long-term members who called me up and mentioned that they potentially had, you know, a pretty severe shoulder uh, injury that could very likely require surgery. And in just talking with him about the sensations that he was feeling, um, the maybe different opinions that he'd gotten, we'd gotten down to the idea, or not the idea, but the, the sole fact that he was assuming based on Google searches that his shoulder was injured to the point where he needed X, Y, and Z surgery. And so there was no third party uh, opinions. There were just kind of some, uh, maybe some self fear tactics that were in play. And by having the conversation with me and talking through some different things, me asking him some different questions on how different things felt, he was actually able to get, stay in his routine. We were able to alter some things based on um, speaking with coaches and I guess like avoiding that area in that current moment in time, which potentially could have been trauma. And now looking at it a week later, completely fine. Right. But he wouldn't have gotten to that point without having the conversation and navigating that, that stuff on his own. And so that's why I say like, you guys are not in this alone. If there's any sort of sensations that you have coming on up, there's no dumb questions. There's no silliness. Like ask us, talk to us. We're very expertise in this realm to where we can kind of navigate you uh, as best as we can on what you're feeling and, and what's going on, because we haven't just experienced it on ourselves. We're not just you know, practicing what we preach, but we have worked with other clients and members that have experienced these things as well. And so I think these are good uh, plans of action when you do experiencing these things where it's like, hey, hey, these are things, these are sensations that I'm feeling that we've chatted about where it's like, this is, these are safe sensations or these are sensations where it's like, hey, we need to have some further conversations with coaches or we need to address a coach to see what is the best alternate solution with what's going on? And so regardless of what you guys are feeling, 
bring that stuff up. We can talk you through it. But like the three main sensations that you're going to potentially experience inside of a gym space are that discomfort, soreness, and pain. And like Arian was saying, if it is pain, talk with a coach. Um, let's create some conversations around it. And because oftentimes it's like, you can't just ignore it and hope it goes away if it is something that's serious. And we definitely don't want that to keep you out of a gym space. And we have different tools. All of our coaches are expertise enough to where it's like, we can keep you in the gym space and keep you moving forward but it might just take a different plan of action. Yeah, that's great. No, I think, um, you know, even, even people who have brought, you know, some of these injuries or previous, you know, discomfort, limitation, pain stuff from other injuries prior to starting with us, or from, you know, other, you know, exercise disciplines outside of here, where it's, uh, it only bothers me when I do this. I mean, a lot of times it's, it's frustrating to have to scale things substantially or to think like, hey, my, I will always be cursed with this discomfort, limitation, whatever, as long as I'm doing this, I can't do. Um, and so I, I feel like a, a big piece of, especially with some of the, you know, education and, the, um, and some of the things that we're working on and doing is we're breaking through some of those limiting beliefs, not only with ourselves, but with a lot of people who have had a, you know, long experience with things that have that, that limiting feeling um, and just for those who don't know, I mean, Megan, my wife, has had two pretty invasive shoulder surgeries. And I mean, sometimes you take steps in directions and you talk to people. I mean, surgeons, like, for lack of a better term, like, surgeons want to do surgery. Like, their, their best tool for them to be able to take on and try to improve a circumstance is to open them up and take a look, even if it, you know, seems like a pretty straightforward. There sometimes are better options. And to be honest, you know, we started this process prior to moving into some of the things that we're taking on now. And had we kind of known a little bit more, I think we would have been able to maybe take uh, some more options. But once we opened that door, now we're kind of stuck in the, in the same place where we, we kind of only have one choice. And so as we've gone through a lot of this just personally and, you know, seeing it professionally and being able to move forward, Asia's right. Like if you guys, if, if there's anything that you feel like is off, or does it make sense? Like, there's no shame in asking. Like, this is not a program where it's uh, pain is, you know, weakness leaving the body and our warm up is your workout. Like, this is very much like you're the majority of people that we talk to who are, you know, behemoths. Like, your goal is to do this for as long as possible. Like, I want to be a part of having the ability to maximize and maintain my fitness for as long as I'm able to. And part of that is you have to be able to know how to address and how to self-diagnose and take care of it. And like Asia said, if your option on, oh, my shoulder's hurting me, well, you know what? If I just ignore it and hope, fingers crossed, that just over time it's going to go away on its own, like that might not be the smartest or most conducive way of solving that problem. And so if, again, no matter how it comes, get, get there five minutes early, chat with the coach, all of us are able to at least give you some forward direction, give you some ideas on how to get yourself out of pain. And if more times than not, if there is like a, a cause or uh, uh, symptoms or something that would be more indicative of something else going on there, dude, we'd be happy to you know, take a look and help and, and move forward on trying to find you know, a path to get you out of pain. Great stuff. Um, we got a good studio audience. Any, any questions, follow-up questions before we potentially wrap up on that topic or anything else that's coming up for you guys out there listening to our pain, discomfort, and soreness talk? All right. Uh, can I say something real quick? Yes, go ahead. I was just going to say one of the things that I've found very helpful with you guys is that as we're going through the exercises, you talk about sometimes not only just the big muscles, but some of the smaller muscles and like, you know, the, the parts of the muscle, like, hey, uh, yesterday with the Nordic curls, it's like, you're gonna, you may be feeling this in this part of the front of your leg. Um, and I found that kind of as helpful. So that way, like the next day, um, if I'm feeling it there, it's, it's kind of like a reassuring, like, oh, okay, I kind of understand that I should be feeling that. Whereas if I'm feeling something where I'm like, that's not a muscle that maybe we should have been working out. It kind of helps me, you know, navigate knowing whether or not I did it correctly. Um, or if that's something I have to be more concerned about. So thank you guys. 
Yeah, that's a really good point that, that you bring up. And we will absolutely utilize that and share that with our team too, to continue to, when we coach movements, kind of give that directed area of, uh, or targeted areas per se. But, um, you know, something that comes up to mind when you bring that up is almost like deadlifts, right? Oftentimes people are going to feel soreness through their erectors, which is the muscles right on the outside of the spine. And oftentimes people will think that they did the exercise incorrectly or they are injured, right? When they feel that soreness following a deadlift day. But, you know, you talk to any of the great strength coaches, they say a true great deadlift workout should leave you relatively like pretty extremely sore through those erectors, just because those spinal erectors are working very, very hard to stabilize that spine and keep it in a good position. And so that just brought up that, um, that example, because I have had many conversations with folks like, am I doing this movement incorrectly because I'm feeling it here the next day? And obviously that's just kind of one um, layer of the onion. There's always these other things that we can talk about, but really appreciate you bringing up that point. And that's something that we'll continue to, uh, to share with our team to make sure that we're talking about targeted areas. So that when you do feel those things, you know that you're doing them right. Anything else, guys? All right, beautiful. Just a reminder, we, Coach Aaron and I, host a uh, support call every month, final Thursday of the month, 3.30 p.m., right here. If you guys have any questions, any topics, anything at all, make sure that you guys drop it to us on our coach's line. We post it every week in the newsletter. You can just send us a response, anything that's coming up to mind. What Air, uh, Coach Aaron and I like to do as well is we just kind of have an ongoing uh, thread in one of our team channels where we just kind of put ideas, whether it's conversations that we have with clients or it's conversations that we have amongst our team that we think would be helpful for you guys to further talk about in further detail. So anything comes up for you guys that we didn't cover this week or you like covered in the, in the following weeks, feel free to let us know. We're constantly posting in the Facebook group and on newsletter. But other than that, another great chat. You guys make it a great one. And we'll see you at the gym later this week.